All right, we're back on the red sniper here. You can see we got the crossover made. This is uh, this was the passenger or driver side piece off of 2500 that came over and went back, and I just cut it and repurposed it to make our crossover here. So it goes in and goes up to the Amazon log, uh, our VS. 44 millimeter gate I wanted it on this side so we could tie it back into the exhaust so it's not as loud when it opens like it is on both my other or all my other turbo trucks and turbo stuff I always vent the atmosphere and on this one I wanted to tie it into the exhaust and uh, so you didn't have that it's not as loud when it opens so got that in and got it mostly welded i'll pull it back out finish welding everything on the crossover and finish this i'll probably put a v-band here um but so it comes down comes back up rises and then comes over back to a four inch hooker max flow and then it offsets and then I cut cut and rotated and then added this piece to make this tailpipe work so it comes all the way out the back on the side got a little damaged in shipping so I'll um, get my ball peen and clean that up got the 17 inch race star wheels on the back and got these Pretty awesome shackles I'm up here. I don't know if you can see them. Oh yeah. And then this thing, you can see, is cracked all the way through there. So we'll be replacing that, and he wants to lower it some more. So we'll be C notching the frame and uh, getting it to his ride height likings. Um, let's see. We'll show the. So you can see the crossover there. See the coming out of the turbo and down. I've been working on the cold side, so it comes out up there. 45 down to stay out of the tire. 90 over, and then right there, I didn't realize that the inlets or the fittings on this intercooler were two and a half, so we had to order some. Uh, reducing couplings to fix that. Um, these are the 20 inch ray stars on the front. And looking good. I had to ask because uh, somebody forgot to put the dipstick tube in, but you know. So I come over here. You can see the comes down over. And then 45's over, and then it comes in, run in there, goes up, and then um, this guy wants to blow off out, so I have to locate that and put the inland air out and the blow off valve on. So here you can see it with it down tailpipe coming on the way out the side um i think it turned out good i like the like the full exhaust from the four inch tailpipe it look looks good uh tilting the bed up pulled the pickup assembly out and put our big fuel pump in it cut the basket out and put in a holly hydro mat and working on the inside uh, they, I guess they had a tracking device or something on there, and they had it wired into the OBD2, and it, in between the big wire and the column there, the big red wire. So I had to pull all that crap out and cut and splice it, and so it would crank up. Got that done, and now it cranks with the key from inside. And I got the the bumper here was about to start test it and see how much I got to cut. The grill is going to have to be cut 
a lot to fit in the center cooler. So hopefully there's enough left of the grill to hide it the best it can. Uh, there you can see the where the cold side comes up here and the <clears throat> blow off valve will go somewhere in here. Uh, this is a vibrant four inch to three and a half reducing coupling and um, had to trim it down. Had to trim it a good bit on this side to get it to fit in there and clear the fan right here. And this is, again, this is a six liter out of a 1500 HD. It has 317 heads. It's got a Summit Stage 2 turbo cam. Uh, their springs, Trailblazer, SS intake, 102 millimeter throttle body, PQI regulator, and these are Holly fuel rails, and 1050cc Holly injectors, I believe they were 367 bucks, got the EV6 connector, which this harness is from a Flex Fuel 01 Tahoe, so that worked out nice. They are a lot shorter, so I had to cut the the regular boss off right here that the fuel rails used to attach to. I cut those off, took the brackets that came with these fuel rails, found the angle of the fuel rail with it down, and this flat spot on the intake, my Bennett drilled it, and then put a bolt and nut, and that, the Allen head bolt actually came with the fuel rails, and then I just... It's the regular 10 millimeter nut that's on these trucks everywhere. So put that on the bottom side. And so it's nice and tight on there. Worked out good. Um, five inch 90 diesel exhaust coupling and filter. Um, I want to trim a little bit and try to fit that a little better. It's kind of tight. And then you can see it's kind of stretched right here on that coupling and so in the feed uh, back here i put compression fittings on the stock lines so it's a dash eight feed and a dash six return dash eight comes up to the blue hose comes over 90s into the back of this rail comes up crossovers in the front comes down the rail up into the regulator and then out of the regulator and back to the tank because uh, behind the fitting behind this alternator was too tight to try to supply a return from there so it just worked out easier to have the crossover in the front and do it that way um, but and everything's coming together good uh, he got the electric fans so I got to finish wiring those in and of course our, I use the same tune out of the Sierra except it had thousand cc snake eaters and these are 1050 so i went to what is it id injectors and got their data and put in there and then it it ran a lot better with those and so cranked right up ran well and so i finish up the cold side and everything get the front end fitted then i'll pull everything apart finish weld on my hot side the crossover the downpipe v-band it and then finish welding the exhaust and once all that's done then um i'm going to build this 4l60 he bought a it's a stage level stage five uh kit from cyclone or somebody and there's our universal pipe kit for our cold side and and there's the uh, box for the rebuild kit so that's got the, you know whatever our level five stuff comes in a 60 so you know it's good but anyway sounds good runs good so far you know i don't want to run it too much because um run into an issue that the belt is actually too long and i've never seen that issue on these because i've got probably seven belts laying around here and they happen to all be the exact same length and when we picked out this uh, power steering knot bracket out of the pile 
you know, it was clean. The power steering reservoir didn't have the extra fitting for the hydro boost. So I was like, okay, we'll use this one. Got it on there. Uh, started rolling with it. Um, put, you know, again, grabbed this alternator out of the pile, put it on there, and went to put the belt on, and too long. So <laughs> I, ha I measured the pulleys. I measured the distances between the alternator and power steering and the different accessories but i mean you know your water pump and tensioner is the same the balancer is the same so there's something about this bracket that's different i don't i don't know i, di I didn't know there was a difference so I, I looked on rock auto and the only thing i could find was that the alternator between a 105 amp and a 145 amp so I think I'll try a different alternator and see if maybe, you know, this must be 105 amp and maybe all my other stuff is a, you know, 145. So try that. Hopefully that'll work out. Uh, that was a nice little piece. That's a zero one map. And then it's actually a pigtail that plugs into yours and then plugs into there. So it was like 20 bucks. So um, I was just going to get the pigtail and splot, you know, repin it or whatever. But found that and um, used it and also made the auto bracket there cobbled it together and out of the this was the bracket off of the 4.3 it came out of the truck so you know the Trailblazer SS was drive-by wire so it didn't have a um, bracket for throttle so I just cobbled this together out of that bracket and just cut it up and welded it and I even painted it which is not common for me but but check out the valve covers you can see they look they still look good and you know see let me tell the front cover see it down there see it's painted wrinkle black looking good so that's where we're at hopefully get the finish out in the cold side and everything finished welded and work on the transmission.